here. I'm Ann Mead. I'm the Director of Family School Community Partnerships. And so this is a, an important part of the work that we're doing is wanting to talk more with doing students and families about their feelings, their thoughts, fears, anything that you want to tell us about coming back to school in September. So I'm going to let Dr. Walls or Mr. Walson do a little bit of um, a welcome to, and then we'll jump into having you raise your hand. Um, tell us a little bit about what school you're in and what grade and your thoughts. So Mr. Walston. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, great to see so many students on the line and their proud parents by their side. And where we can't see students, we can see parents. So happy to see uh, so, so much involvement this afternoon. Uh, so one, um, you, you guys might be aware, students, you might be aware, um, I, I, number one, I hope the last three, four months um, away from the school buildings uh, finds you and your family well. Um, we are trying to prepare our schools so all of you can come back to a school building that is safe, uh, safe for your teachers, uh, safe for our staff, safe, safe, and, and most importantly, safe for you. Um, the the governor, if you hear some noise in the background, that's my dog who decided to start drinking water right now as I'm talking to you, uh, so I apologize. So um, the governor released um, guidelines for, back to, for, for safe back to school guidelines on Monday. Uh, the district, meaning Danbury Public Schools, we are wrestling with uh, those recommendations and trying to figure out how we can safely get you back into school, how we can safely get, back, get your teachers back into school, and even our parents who drop you off and pick you up, make sure we have appropriate protocols in place uh, for safe dismissal and safe arrival on a daily basis. Um, some of the questions that have come up from your teachers in our, in our all earlier morning session is um, you guys are probably aware of the social distancing rules and, and wearing a mask. And so a lot of questions have been raised about um, how are we gonna handle kids walking down the hall? What are we gonna do about sharing materials in the classroom? Is this gonna be safe for my kids? Um, so the, the teachers have expressed a lot of concerns about your safety and we wanna make sure we come up with protocols, safety protocols to make sure you're safe and everyone in the building is safe. So today is very important for us um, as we've gotten feedback from our parents, as we've gotten feedback from our staff, we wanna make sure we get feedback from you to, to, to kind of think, to learn about what you feel like your priorities are to make sure we have a safe school reentry in the fall. Um, so Dr. Ann Mead has put together a really good process to help elicit your feedback. Um, and Ann, I will get out the way so you can get us ready and hopefully either Sal or I will say a couple of closing thoughts when we end. Great, great. Thank you, Mr. Walston. We appreciate it. So let's go. So everybody knows how to use the raise the hand feature. So we've got some good stuff going on. So our first person we wanna hear from is Zach. So, what if um, we're going to be eating in the cafeteria? Why would? How are we going to eat in the cafeteria? And I know on these we normally don't give some feedback, um, but I think to relay any fears or how many fears down. Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Walston if he'd like to just respond in a sentence or two to some of these. Sure, sure. Hi, Zach. Um, so, Zach, we, we are, number one, we don't have all the answers. Let me just say to you and everyone on this call, uh, and the answers that I might provide might change by the time we open up school. But right now, our initial plan, particularly at elementary school, um, the thought, particularly at, at elementary school and middle school, the thought is, is that we would have students eating in their classrooms. Um, and part of what we need to figure out is if we are eating in classrooms, how are we gonna get food safely to your classroom? Who's gonna be available for supervision so that staff can also have an opportunity to eat lunch themselves? Or will we be asking teachers to eat lunch with you? So those are some of the things we're trying to figure out. But right now the thought is, if we're not gonna all congregate in the cafeteria together, we would bring food to you. That's a great question, Zach. Great, thank you, Zach. Amanda Pascarella, please. Um, so some of my concerns is I have a friend who has kids okay, going to like elementary school, middle school. 
school and I think high school. Um, so when they all, so when they all come home and the parents are at work, when are they going to like all the germs? bring in so so Anne, i just wrote Ma amanda is it possible you can include your question in the chat box because i i couldn't understand you at all um it was kind of going in and out on my side i don't know if anyone else heard you if so they can yeah i think there's a connection issue hard. okay can you hear them now I can hear you, but it's 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 very blurry. It's it's not a good connection. Um, okay, we'll so put you, it you, in the chat. You put it in the chat. Okay, Amanda, thank you so much. So how about while you write that one, and we'll go to the next question, and then I'll come back and answer your question. Is that okay? Of course, thank you. Okay, thank. You. Oh, now we can hear you. <laughs> Should I try? Should he try again? Yeah. One more time. So uh, my friend has kids going to elementary school, middle school, and high school. And the parents go to work. When they all come home, there's a lot of germs there. Too. Okay, you know what? Okay, we're not. We're not going to test your writing skills. Please put it in. Please put your question in the chat. Absolutely. And I'll and, I'll, and we'll circle right back to you. Great. We'll go on to Gabrielli. And we'll come back to Amanda. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I want to ask a question. Like, is there any possibilities that we're going to have like, um, uh, open school this year and have a full day year round? Hi, Gabrielli. Uh, what, what, would you mind me asking what level you're at? Elementary, middle, or high school? I just school? finished middle school. I'm going to high school. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, so I, yeah, you, you must, you must be anxiously awaiting a, a response to that question. So, so Gabrielli, at, at the moment, the plan is the governor has requested that we all go back to school in the fall. Um, okay. But, but, but the expectation is we're supposed to go back to school in the fall. And, and it's supposed to be done safely. Part of, you know, and, and, and those expectations are that we're going to be appropriately socially distanced, um, that we can keep everyone safe. And we're trying to make sure that we can do that for you, for all of your friends, for all of our teachers and for all of our administrators in the district. Um, and so the answer to your question, the, the, the quick, simple answer to your question is yes. The expectation is we will open up schools in the fall and you know, um, short of a resurgence, uh, we will continue to remain in school throughout the school year. Um, but it is a strong possibility that we might have some modifications to what school will look like again in the fall, whether that's full distance learning. I get that, but are we going to school the whole week or is it gonna be some days we go to school, some days we stay home? Yeah, I, 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 no, I understand. And so we, we're still trying to figure that out. Um, and, and part of this feedback, this feedback opportunity is to get to, to get a full understanding from our community, meaning you, um, what you feel like is the best, the safest way to re-enter our schools. Um, okay. So do, do you have a feeling? So, so the answer to your question is, Gabrielle, we haven't made that decision yet, but the governor right now expects us to all be back in school in September. Um, okay. there, may, there may be some modifications to that, but as of right now, and, and you know, we can, we can certainly advocate for something different, but right now the expectation is all all kids are back in school with mask in September and socially distanced to the best extent possible. Okay, thank you. Okay, and and I'm, and I'm sorry I couldn't give you something more, um, concrete, you know, like definitive, right, right. But it's it's really a moving target right now. I get it. I get it. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Right. So we have a lot of hands up. So I think what I want to do at this point is I know you all want to hear from Mr. Walston some feedback to your questions. Um, we will make sure that we, uh, first of all, we are recording this 
and we will publish something down the road more definitively to answer your questions. But I think at this point, we just wanna hear from everyone. So if we can start off with Jennifer Grant, please. Hi. Um, I'm a student at Danbury High School and I've um, last year the halls were really, really crowded and it was really hard to get to class in general, but I'm really like worried as of now with going back to school, how it's gonna be handled because I could barely get anywhere. And I know that um, now with the whole COVID-19 thing, it'll be even worse having everybody so condensed into one given area. So I was just wondering about that. Yeah, Jennifer, that's a great wondering because we, we, we share the same wondering. Um, we, we had a great meeting with administrators this morning um, and as you, and they echo the same sentiments. Uh, we had it. We, we had teachers in middle school um, and the high school who also expressed concern about about um, you know congregation of students in the hallway and how are we going to safely be able to move students around the building, given how given how crowded we are. Um, and 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 this is why we have this is why we raise concerns about you know the reentry. And so um, we're, we're hoping that there's an opportunity for some modifications to the plan, but we don't know. We don't know fully yet, um, but right now we're, we're certainly, you know, planning on a full reentry and coming up with protocols that, that that within reason, Jennifer, to keep everyone safe. And so one of the things that we talked about is having staircases that are one way, um, hallways that you know follow typical you know street traffic patterns, so everyone's on the right hand side of the hallway. If you can envision what that would look like, um, to try to, to try to mitigate the risk of exchange of you know germs. Uh, while kids are passing in the hallway. And then of course the expectation is students will, will be wearing their masks, but, but we do, we, we fully understand your concern and we're trying to come up with um, options so that we don't have so many students in the school at once, particularly the high school. Great, thank you. And we'll move to Shay Moore, please. Hi, I'm a student at Rogers Park and for transportation, there are many students that don't have an option for going, for having a parent drive them to school, what are we gonna be able to do for on a bus when they're already overflowing and I don't believe anyone will be paying for more buses? How would you sort out? Yeah, hi Shay, thank you for that question. And so um, you guys are not making the questions any easier for this, I'll tell you that right now. Um, I, Honestly, Shay, we, we don't have an answer to that question. Um, cert, part, of, part of what we plan to do is to survey our, our, our families um, to get a feel of what, what families will be taking advantage of, of our school busing and what will not. And then, and then with that information, we can kind of determine how much uh, reasonably, how much social distancing we can do on our buses. Um, we, we had a survey pushed out to our community earlier um, and we got this sense uh, from our parents that uh, many of them would be driving their, their children to school, but to your point, not everyone. Um, and so we will, you know, our, our thoughts were we would come back and have another survey that's a little more definitive. This is exactly what school will look like in the fall once we have those details in place. And then, and then you know, and then poll our, our families and ask, you know, do you plan to send your child to school? Do you plan to send your child to school on the bus? Will you be picking your, your child up from the bus every day? And then begin to use that information to determine how we're going to socially distance, if we can safely do it, um, and then what additional resources we might need. All right, thank you. You're welcome, Sharon. Right. Thank you, and I love the um, talk that's going on in the chat box. So if parents have a comment or wanna add more, um, please feel free to, because it's great to hear from lots of different folks. And so Griffin, please. Hi, so I'm a uh, rising senior at Danbury High School and um, I'm going to preface this by saying that I understand that you may not have answers to as many things as we would all like, but I think we all appreciate that the efforts that you are taking to make the return to school as safe as possible. Um, one caveat to that is I think that having read the budget for this upcoming year and understanding how high school children work, there is no way that 
enforcing social distancing or mask wearing is going to be effective in any capacity on buses. Um, and I think that in order to alleviate that, something needs to be done to reduce capacity on buses because as it is, we can only, in order to keep people six feet apart, you can only have like 10 people on a bus and we do not have money for enough buses. So I think something along the lines of staggering who goes to school on what days, as much as that might not be fun for us, it would help keep down people in the hallways, people on buses, um, in classrooms. And I think that if we don't do that, that the amount of people that aren't able to be driven to school or drive to school is going to be completely overwhelming. And also, yeah, that's a good point, Jennifer. The amount of people that will just outright refuse to wear a mask is going to be a problem whether we want it to be or not. Great, thank you for sharing that. Mateus, please. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm a student at Royce Park Middle School. Mateus, can you move closer to your mic? I want to know how we're going to do that in. Mateus, we're not able to understand you. Can you put your thoughts in the chat? I'm going to do with the bus because outside is hot. Mateus, Mateus, we're not understanding you. No, Mateus, we're not understanding you. Can you put your message in the chat box for us, please? Thank you. And we're gonna move on to Lauren, our cherry, please. Hi, I know this is uh, probably low on the list of things, but both of my kids do a uh, marching band in the fall. Are we looking at what we are going to do as far as after school activities or are we shelving that and just really concentrating on what we're gonna do in the classrooms? Hi, Lauren. Um, so we we did receive guidance uh, from the state um, around extracurricular activities, um, and, and I'll just speak to two. Um, you know, one of them be, being extracurricular activities. You know, meaning um, CIAC released some information about sports and after school sporting. So that's one. Um, and then the other one is, and so for example, band, instruments, orchestra. Um, they have released some guidance on, on those content areas and also performances and spoke to, you know, the fact that those things can be done, um, but with increased, um, increased social distancing. So for example, if it's orchestra, strong, you know, string instruments, et cetera, orchestra singing, um, instead of being six feet apart, um, it will need to be extended to 12 feet apart. Um, they encouraged us to, you know, take advantage of football fields and really large spaces that can accommodate, you know, large size groups of, you know, 35 to 50 students, because oftentimes we know how big uh, those groups can be. And they also encouraged us to have, you know, smaller, uh, smaller group sizes uh, for training and, you know, uh, practicing and then bring the bigger groups together only when necessary. Um, so there is some initial guidance on making that happen. The expectation is if we're gonna open up school fully in the fall, um, that all the extracurricular activities will also be part of the school experience. Okay, great, thank you so much. You're welcome. And, and of course that doesn't make it easy to make implement, uh, but the expectation is that we would if we're opening up fully. Great, but I'm gonna yeah, turn- Thank you for asking that question because I know a, fam a lot of families and students are probably wondering. I'm just gonna turn my camera to the one sitting next to me so she can give you her thoughts. And then we'll keep moving on. Um, I think that um, like in classrooms, there should be like only like three people. Like for the blocks, I think there should only be three people at a time doing it. And on the buses, only 20 people. Hmm. Thank you. And Anne, what's that, what's, what's that young lady's name? Riley. Okay. Riley. So Riley, we're, we're going to get you on this share Google Doc so you can help me with this plan, please. 
Good, great. She was also concerned about children's masks getting snapped by other children. So that was last yeah. night. So let's hear. Oh, and so, Anne, can I can I speak to the mask? Because sure. uh, for those students who are on, um, the 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 district is expecting to have an extra available mask for students in in, in those cases, um, anticipating that those things can happen. And so, you know, the, the the state expectation is anytime we enter a building, um, everyone would have a mask on anyway. Uh, but we also understand um, that you know masks will break. Um, you know, students might lose their mask, um, and the, you know, whatever might happen. And so we want to, we will, we will definitely have additional mask available for kids throughout the school day and staff as well. Great. Okay. And we'll go to Zach, please. Um, what about switching masks and kids with asthma? Yeah. Yeah. So 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 zach i'm sorry is your question students with asthma making sure they have a mask that is um a, a, make sure that they're wearing a mask that protects them um what i'm asking is since uh wearing a mask for a prolonged period can bother kids asthma and inhibit their breathing so much that they will have an asthma attack sometimes um uh, what are we going to do about that? And also, um, three uh, about after every three hours, reusable masks and other masks will need to be switched. So what what we have talked about extensively, um, and whether this be for students or for staff, um, but students uh, specifically, is uh, making sure we've identified all of our students um, that have compromised immune systems in any way. And so students like who cut, who have, you know, asthma, who have, you know, other conditions that could be compromised in this, you know, going back to school uh, the, to make sure we, we have some type of consultation with our school nurse and the students and their family uh, to walk them through, you know, the expectations when we go back to school. Uh, so Zach, that, that was a great question. I, I appreciate you asking. You're muted, Anne. Yeah, thank you. Is well, Trisha Robinson, please? Trish? Yeah. Trisha? There you uh, are. Hello. Um, I was wondering how are we going to manage the cafeteria because um, in this school you get a lunch break and there's a lot, a lot of people mm -hmm. in the cafeteria. So how exactly, and you have to take your mask off to eat. So how exactly are we gonna space out everybody in the cafeteria? And are we gonna eat in our classes? Right, and I'm sorry, can, can you repeat your name again? I, I you went in and out oh, from you. My name is Kieran Suri. So, Mr. Walston, can I, am I coming through now? I'm having technical problems. Sure, sure. All right, am I coming through? Yes. yes. Oh, oh, great, great. Thank. Go ahead. No answer. Uh, it is a problem we're all thinking about, about eating in the cafeteria and tr trying to have being spaced out. We're trying to um, work that through. Uh, obviously, you can't use a mask while you're doing that, so we'd have to work through some way of, of getting the lunches to folk, get them to you so that you can eat them while you're spaced out. That's something that's concerning to us, so thank you for the question. Great, glad to see you're with us, Dr. Sal, wonderful. Oh, I've been in and out, in and Good. out, in and out. Okay, all right, great. We'll go to Javier, please. Hello, I go to Westside and my sister goes to DHS and in the bathrooms, we need soap, hot water and individual paper towels at our schools, we run out pretty quickly because either it's because of the amount of people that go to the bathrooms or people doing, pretending to be funny and just Thanks. wasting them. So how will these, um, how will these be provided? Yeah. Go ahead. Sal, you want me to take that? Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. So, um, is, Xavier, so some of the things that we've talked about is increased cleaning and disinfecting protocols uh, throughout the day. So that is definitely something that we're looking at. We understand 
Um, it, it's an absolute priority for our buildings uh, because we're going to be encouraging um, um, students and staff to be disinfected on a daily, you know, on an ongoing basis throughout the school day. Um, and so we will have disinfectant materials you know, in our classrooms and in common spaces throughout the school. Um, but we also recognize that there's going to be a need to make sure that our 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 bath our restrooms are adequately um, uh, stocked. Um, and so that that will definitely be a priority for us. Uh, some of the questions that were raised earlier uh, throughout the day as well was will we, will we have um, you know increased or additional custodial staff throughout the school day, um, recognizing that they can't you know be everywhere at the same time, whether that's you know, making sure bathrooms are, are clean, you know, have ongoing cleaning, making sure we're wiping commonly used spaces, you know, like doorknobs and when folks first enter the building. Um, and so we, we, we have an eye on that and beginning to think that through of what that's going to look like and the impact it's going to have on the budget. Uh, but we are mindful that that's need, that needs to be a priority for us because we're certainly going to be encouraging everyone to keep their hand, hands clean throughout the day. Um, I have a few more questions. Should I wait again or should I say them now? Go ahead, go ahead and ask them. Okay, thank you. Um, how frequently are the bathrooms going to be cleaned? Yeah. Again, uh, okay. as, as Mr. Walson just said, we're, we're gonna have to have a, a, a more rigorous routine to doing that. Can't answer that right now. Probably more often than, uh, than, than we could anticipate depending on the usage, but we'd have to keep a close eye on them, have added staff, and keep them as clean as possible. Um, that's what we'd have to do and, and monitor it daily. Some days are probably more than others, you know, it depends, but it's, it's a high priority for us to make sure that they stay clean. And who will enforce that the masks stay on? Well, how, how old are you? Um, 12. Well, help me out. You know, I, I could see where it's gonna be difficult uh, we're going to have to cooperate. The adults are going to have to cooperate. This is very unusual. So, you know, we're, we're, we don't have a police state. This is for medical reasons and health reasons. I think most students will just follow. Someone's having some real um, challenges with it. So we'd have some timeout areas so that they could take the mask off. We, got, we have to be reasonable. I don't want, we don't want the kids to start being put out of school and all that stuff because they won't wear a mask. We're looking for cooperation. So part of it is that we're gonna to have to ask parents to help us work with their youngsters, tell them how important it is. And then when, when something happens at school and it will happen, that we work with that person so it gets back on reasonably. So we work together as a team. Okay, um, open, Never mind. That's okay. Thank you. Hey, Xavier, thanks for saving your hard questions for my boss. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's wonderful. Xavier, also put your thoughts in the um, chat box too, because we're getting some good uh, conversation in there as well. well we are before, but I just couldn't, I couldn't get the audio to work and I kept knocking it up, but I did hear some of it. Okay. Was some good questions. And yeah. Answer, yes. Alberta, please. Hi. Hello. Yeah, so I'm a student at DHS. I'm going to be a senior this upcoming year. So I just wanted to ask if, like, if we will be able to, like, as you said, like, we have to wear masks in school. So will you guys provide them for us or we will be providing them for ourselves? Because at this time, it's very difficult for everybody to get masks. And as if you see in the, like, in in Amazon or like some other places, they're really, really like really expensive. So will you guys be able to provide them for us or we have to provide them for ourselves? Well, right now we're still talking about it. We'll probably have, obviously we'll have the, um, uh, some masks available for those that during the day that, 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 that folks that don't have them. And then uh, we'll work with families if the, we need to purchase some. So right now we're working through that. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And we'd like Hi. to hear from Kira McCarthy next. Hi, um, I was just wondering, again, how the hallways are going to work. Like, do you think it's a possibility that they'll, like, send one section of the school out in the hallways at a time? Turn it on here. Just like at the high school, rather yeah. than have everyone like all three thousand kids at the hallway at the same time, because like it can be very like pushy in the hallways. Well, 
Dr. Kyle, were you going to respond to that? Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, Kira, that, that that's a great question. Um, the, the the high did you say you're at the high school now? Yeah, I'm gonna be a junior. Okay. Um, well, it would have been easier if you were K five. I could have been easy to answer that question, but I, I I'll try to answer that question for K five, six, eight, and nine, twelve. Um, but specifically for nine, twelve at Danbury High School, um, your principal, you know, school administrators, and us. We're all trying to, to think through the, the, the safest way, the best way to keep all of you guys safe. Um, and, 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 and that could mean a number of different things from different ways on how you guys are going to, different times on how you're going to enter, different days on how you're going to enter school, um, different times on how you're going to be released from classrooms. Um, and, and so we're still exploring all of those things. Um, and so we don't, we don't have anything definitive for you right now. Um, at K five and six eight, particularly K five, one of the you know some of the things we talked about in terms of hallway movement is is following the normal traffic patterns um, that we typically would have, um, and and you know keeping keeping our students socially distanced. Um, you should know that your teachers are asking the same um, important questions. The, the administrators are asking the same questions, and and the superintendent, um, Dr. Pascarella, has been pushing us to think through a plan. Um, to answer that very question, you know, how are we going to mitigate the risk in our hallways? How are we going to mitigate the risk um, in our, hall, in, you know, going to the cafeteria? Um, how are we going to mitigate the risk, you know, when 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 classes release and where kids are getting off the buses and coming in the building all congregated? Um, and we're still trying to figure those things out. Um, and 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 again, and trying to see if there's any flexibility on how we enter school um, in the fall. Uh, so we're still thinking through those things. Um, and we're still reaching back out to the state to see if there's any flexibility on how we enter. Uh, okay, I just have one more quick question. Sure. So do you think it's like, it's probably going to be like, I don't know how to say this. Um, so we're probably going to just like leave the classroom doors like open at all times and unlocked so we avoid like touching doorknobs and everything? I know. We're, that, we're, we're yeah. working with the health department. And for all of that, we want to, fresh air is good, leaving windows open. We don't expect a lot of movement in the hallway. So I would hope things like that can work out. I think what's going to happen if and when we get back, we're just going to have to try some of these things that work best for us. We don't have air conditioning, as you guys know, in all the areas. But so we have to, windows open is going to be healthy, doors passing through. So we're going to have to play that through, all of those things. Um, as I said before, we're all going to be, this is going to be very unusual and very different for all of us. Um, and it's going to take some time to figure this out. We'll try to do what's right. And that's why we had this call today to keep these things in mind. So as we do some of this, that we, um, we, we plan that way as best we can. So I'm sure we'll keep them open as we can for a lot of reasons. One is the ventilation. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. It's a good question, Kara. Thank you. And let's hear from Scott G next. Uh, so I'm also a student at THS. Um, and like, I mean, after listening to like a lot of things people are saying, like there's clearly many concerns, like, you know, with going back to school and everything. So I think distance learning is definitely going to play a part, whether it's like fully distance learning or some sort of hybrid. Um, so as far as distance learning is going, like this year, or well, I guess last year, um, we went into the school or we went into distance learning already having like relationships and stuff with our teachers. They already knew how to teach us for the most part, right? Like, like things were pretty much down packed for the most part. It was the end of the year. Um, you know, if we go like right into distance learning this year or we don't, you know, see teachers a lot, like how is that going to work? Is the distance learning going to be like it was this year where they just assign us work or is it going to be like some sort of, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if it has to be Zoom, but like some sort of something like that, like Zoom meetings, where it's essentially like a normal school day just at home, if that makes sense. Right now, the state is putting the platform together to, to make it a better system across the state. Everybody felt the way you did. Um, and uh, it has to be enhanced. We're hoping more synchronous work where you're actually doing some things. So those are all improvements that are going to have to happen as best we can. Yeah. So now the assignment of the teachers is an interesting question, depends on how we start, you know. Um, you know, it's just like we have credit recovery, folks go on the computer, there's no relationship with a the teacher. That is not what we want. So 
we have to work that through. But it should be a better system. And the state is talking to us about having a different system. And we need to see what that'll look like. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I got you. If we could have everyone um, mute their mic while other people are talking, that'll stop some of the background noise. And we'd like to hear from Minnie next. Yeah. Minnie, are you there with us? Or your son? Minnie, you're on mute. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, good afternoon. Um, so um, this question is from Cyrus, who is a, uh, who is a Broadview student um, next year. And um, the question, um, just a minute. He just texted me the question. The question was, um, we're trying to, are you trying to limit student interaction beyond the classroom? It was one of my questions also. So um, what, along the lines that do you have a plan for teachers to move between classrooms rather than children so that, you know, to mitigate? What's good, the way it's going to work, obviously K-5 easier to keep youngsters in a cohort in school. Middle high school becomes challenging as students talking about before about hallway. But the idea is to minimize the number of folks that come into a class that, that there's going to have uh, in, contact with each other the best we can. We'd have to work those into it. You know, um, folks from the outside, field trips, things of that nature, you're just going to have to curtail all of that. Try to minimize the movement and those that come in contact with, them, with, with, with the students during the day. K-5 easier said than 6th, 7th, and 8th, and even harder at the high school based on the specialized content. It's going to be a challenge. And one other question was, are they going to have the te temperature checks done? At this point, uh, we're going to have to rely on the medical folks to, to advise us on that. Certainly anything with symptoms and that we would do. But for, uh, as they come through the doors and stuff, and that's something we're, we're going to have a conversation with the medical folks for their advice. Yeah, you know, when you have thousands and thousands and thousands of people coming in, you know, to put everybody through that could be somewhat daunting to us. But if we have suspect, the reason we believe that has to happen, obviously, we'll have to do something and advise parents not to send students to school that do have temperatures. Uh, so we're going to work with the physical with, with our health department and nurses the best way around that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to move on to Solange, please. Kevin, you may have to take them. The thing is going in and out on me. No problem. Okay, I'm having problems again. I don't know why. Hi, um, I had a question about the classroom. How many people, are you going to reduce the people that are in the classroom or do you like um, separate desks between students? If you could hear me, what we're going to try to do is we have, we're working with some specialists that go through classrooms and try to set them up the state saying, as long as we're wearing a uh, mask, that um, you know that that'll 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 help us with distancing, but we'd like to give everybody as much distance as possible. So we probably will have to move furniture out of rooms where we can to get everybody more room, so that there is some spacing between. So that's something that's a goal for us to work on. Yes, so we have to work on that. But okay. the state is yeah. I have another question about the gym. So since we have gym right and we're I'm gonna do exercise. Do you have to take the mask or still wear them? We're not sure about the gym classes and specials. We're working on that. That's that's a good question, and um, I don't have a good answer right now. We're gonna ask um, the physical education teachers the rest to help us with that, and look how all the specials with art, music, uh, lessons that may have to be it'll probably be much different than what we used to. So, okay. Okay. Good question. Good. Okay. And and I understand Amanda had a question and she had included it in a group chat, but honestly, there are so many now I, I couldn't I follow along. Can we just ask Amanda, do you want to ask that question for everyone? Amanda, go ahead. 
you're muted. Hi, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you? Yeah, save your yeah, hand. I think so. I think so. Okay. Um, so my question was, should we like be able to go to recess? Because I know I go to Pembroke and we do two grades combined and that's a lot of people and it's definitely more than 50 so and we're all touching the same equipment so what are we gonna do about recess yeah amanda that that that's a great question I, i'm sorry sally still there yeah uh, okay. we want we want folks to go outside so we're going to figure out how to do recess in areas so that it's safe but it won't be the same but we want to go outside when we can so yes, we're gonna have some kind of recess. It'll be a little bit different, but you can, you know, that that's healthy for us to do. And and Amanda, you should also know there were some some points raised earlier that we actually may need to build in uh, mask like recess for for our students and just kind of go outside and just take the mask off and just breathe and get a break. Um, and so the recess is an absolute yes, um, but we may also have to build in some recess for you guys just to get some air. Um, go outside where everyone's socially distanced and then come back to the school. So we, we, we will. I'm sorry, may I just add on to his question? I think that's all fabulous, except for that we live in the Northeast and it rains a lot in the fall and it snows in early winter. So is there a plan in place for these things to happen within the building as well in a safe environment? I know issue. Yeah, yeah. So I, I could be honest with you, I have not heard any alternative plans to for recess um, outside of the building. Uh, you know, certainly there's opportunity to take advantage of bigger spaces like our cafeteria or, you know, depending on the school that you're in or our gym. Um, but no, we have not talked through, you know, alternatives to outside recess uh, to date. Uh, but your point is a good one. We'll make sure we, we, we think through what that looks like. Thank you. So, Sharija, please. Um, hi, I'm uh, going to be a sophomore in DHS, and I have a couple of questions. Sure, go ahead. So my first one will be about masks. I do understand that we're going to have to wear them when we're in class and everything, but considering that the school day is like, oh, like more than five hours, I don't know how students will be able to like have it on the whole time like it would be pretty uncomfortable so how are you going to handle that okay go ahead do you have another question um and also sharing materials in classes like gym and science we're gonna have to share materials and sit in desks that probably other students have sat on so um how's the sanitation uh gonna work there right well, wow, th th those are some great questions. Um, and so let let me tackle, try to tackle the, the first part first. Um, can, can you tell me what you said at the beginning? Um, it was like a three part question. Can you tell me what you asked at the beginning? Um, it's about the masks. How yep. are- All day. Yeah. Mm -hmm, the challenge. The whole day. Mm -hmm. And so, and so we, we recognize it's it's going to be a challenge for, for our students and for our staff. Um, and so, which is, which is one of the reasons why earlier on the phone call, because we had a similar meeting with teachers this morning, um, and they encouraged us to think through, um, you know, mask breaks, if you will, uh, for our students and staff, and finding opportunities for you guys to have built-in breaks throughout the day. Um, you know, literally where you guys can go outside, we're safe, everyone's socially distanced, um, and we can take off our mask and just kind of, and just kind of get a break from the mask itself. Um, I, I think we're going to have to be intentional about making sure these things are built in as part of our schedule, um, because we we understand it's going to be a significant adjustment. You know, all of us go out now and wear a mask, and you know, go to the supermarket or maybe even go to the mall now. Um, but it's very different, to your point, to to, to have to wear one all day. Um, and so, I, you know, our thoughts, particularly coming off of our meeting this morning, is that we need to think through and have someone set with intentionality make sure our kids have an opportunity to get a break from the mask uh, so we're not exactly sure what that's going to look like but 
we're going to have to come up with a plan because it's probably unreasonable to think everyone's going to be have it on for five consecutive hours. So it's a great question. And your other question, can you repeat that again? Um, sharing materials in art and science and gym and sitting on desks that probably other students have sat on because we're going to have to switch between classes. And so j just so you know, I have a very nervous and anxious colleague on the line. She's a director of finance and facilities and operations and everything else. And, um, and, and, and we have talked through a plan where, so for example, I'll just start with you know, subjects like art, uh, but to your point, it also applies to subjects like science, uh, where you guys work in groups, we work in teams, you share materials in CTE classes, you know, we share materials in there. And the expectation is to 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 the to, to the extent possible, we will have individual. We'll, we'll need to order and make sure we have individual materials for students. Um, and so, you know, in our K five classes, elementary school classes, where you know it's sharing of art materials, sharing of you know science materials, group work, it's going to have to be separate, and and students contribute a little differently. Um, and, and, and so, you know, going up to the middle schools, if we have art classes where they share materials or group work in our classrooms, it's also going to have to be, we're gonna to have to provide students with their own materials. I, I mean, we've gone as far as to talk through, you know, individual packets of materials for our students um, so, that, so that we limit or reduce, you know, the, the um, reduce sharing of materials in class. Um, we, we, we have not, and, and that's a very good point, you know, in, in every case where classes are changing, um, there might be a need, uh, you know, there's a need to, to, to possibly, you know, wipe down the spaces. Um, and, and honestly, I don't know if we've thought, we've, we've thought that part through. Um, and we, you know, certainly we had talked about internally, you know, at the end of the school day, every classroom will be disinfected. Um, and, and that's certainly something that will be able to happen. But I think if in absence of being able to wipe down chairs, you know, in between periods, um, we may not be able to get to every single seat, but we can encourage every single student to make sure their hands are clean um, in between classes going in and out of classes. And so if we have disinfecting materials for you guys to disinfect your hands when leaving or entering a classroom, I think that will certainly help us mitigate the risk. Um, I, I know it's not a great, a great response or a great answer, um, and, and that's why this farm farm is so important to help us think through these things. So I, I appreciate the question. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. So our next person is Michael Snow. Hi, uh, I'm a student at Danbury High School, and I had a. I know we touched on the subject before in the call, but I just wanted to touch back on it just to get a more solid answer. Sure. So. Will we I hope be I able to? <laughs> okay. Well, will we be able to participate in extracurricular activities such as like clubs, sports, tutoring hours, and more during the upcoming school year? I'm asking this because, especially for high school students, this can be a very important part in making them well-rounded students and adding to their college application. And in the and if the pandemic can become a problem and making this happen, we can very well meet in different locations to make it easier, or even have the students disinfect, disinfect, dis, sorry, disinfect the locations that they meet in if, uh, if the problem is that janitors won't have time to clean up that, those spaces after they meet. Yeah, M Michael, great question, great point um, about how important it is to your portfolio. Um, I, I, I think, and because we re we received some initial guidance about extracurricular activities, not necessarily clubs in, in, in particular, but I, I think Michael, as long as we can demonstrate that we can uh, congregate safely, um, and, and certainly if we can demonstrate we can congregate safely in a classroom, I would like to think we can congregate safely in a club, right? Where typically we may not have as many as many students in a club as as our typical classroom, so. Uh, my answer would be yes, uh, without without seeing that explicitly in the plan. Um, but again, if we're back to school fully, um, you know, we're, we're going to be back to school fully. Um, if we're back to school with conditions, then we'll certainly need to spell those conditions out, you know, beyond wearing a mask. Uh, but I anticipate if we're back to school 100% capacity in the fall, 
these extracurricular activities that you're talking about uh, will, will, will be in play. I do have one more question. Should I wait to ask that? No, please go ahead. So if we were to implement a hybrid education system, I would, I'd like to share my opinion on not having the school days be cut short. And if the hybrid system were to be in place that I as a student would prefer that some students would go in for a full day and other students would go in on separate days for also a full day rather than some students going in for the morning and some going in for the afternoon. Because I could see how this can waste time with all the buses and the disinfections that are disinfecting the locations the students have been in. Um, this can also make getting to extracurriculars more difficult and for the students that aren't at the school at the time and can even cut the education short or having to leave from the learning at look having to leave the school to go to a different location to learn can be proven as difficult yeah um so so these are these are great questions and points that you're raising um honestly and, and i'm learning something new um every town hall forum that we're in i'm learning something new every time um, and, 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 and not to see, I mean, as a, as an educator and former principal, it's not as if I haven't experienced these things, but it's, it's reminding me of how important these things are, Michael. So I, I appreciate you raising these, these issues. Um, we will, um, because, you know, with, with so many things in play, um, and, and, and worrying about and thinking through how we're going to make sure the buildings are safe, uh, we also need to make sure we have school. Right, and that your school that your school experience is is, is honored and, and is as 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 consistent with what how we know schooling and, and we have to we have to make sure that happens. And so you have brought up the point about hey, if they're gonna if there are options out there, these are options that I would like, and then these are the reasons why. Um, when there will be a need for us to push out another survey to everyone, um, and when we do push out a survey, we will likely have a survey that's going to articulate the different options that are available if, because the, the governor has access to one, um, at, at this low, low level of instances in the community to go back to school at 100%. However, if, we ever, if there's ever a place where we are designated as a community at moderate instances of COVID-19 in a community, um, then we would enter school at a reduced, at a reduced, um, at a reduced, at reduced levels. And it, it's important for the community to have some feedback to help inform this decision. And so, although right now we have a thought exchange out there that it's um, eliciting feedback on what you feel like our top priorities should be, um, but we will explicitly have some type of survey once we know exactly what our plan is, uh, folks will know exactly what's, what's available, what's in front of us, and then they can make some choices. And one of those choices definitely needs to be, if we're gonna have a reduced model, what are the models and what are the options? And it will make sure that that's, that's in there in some way um, so you guys can give your feedback. So Mike, I appreciate you asking the questions the way you have. So we'll go to Christopher Borges next. Chris? Uh, I heard, um, yeah, I got a question from a and I'm going to another question about the school. Chris, Chris, go closer uh, to your mic. Try going closer uh, to your mic. Can you hear now? That's better. Stay close to the uh, mic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I have a question regarding school budget and how due to COVID 19, you're going to have to, and then obviously, buy and ordering more. Um, the company because uh, due to the budget, so we're going to get this much increase spending, and you're supposed to be decreasing. So, okay, Chris, yeah. we're losing you. Can you put your message in the chat box? We're not able to totally understand you, but I think your question is very um, concerning to everyone. So, please put it in the chat box. Okay. So, and the, yeah. and there was also a question about um, orientation. It looks yes. Um, Eric had asked, and and maybe Serena as well. Incoming. Actually, I'm not sure if Eric asked this question, but 
There Serena was had asked asked people that asked about freshman orientation. Okay, and and you know we 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 have freshman orientation in place for a reason because we recognize how important that transition is. Uh, so we will we will make sure we work with the principal to figure out what the alternative is going to be. Um, you know some of the some some of the things that I've heard so far is um, not necessarily at Denver High School, but I know Ace was talking about perhaps some type of virtual orientation uh, where the, you know the principal will be walking around the school um, and provide an orientation for students that way if we can't get students in in person uh, for the orientation. So I will make sure um, you know when we connect with Dan. Uh, that we're, we're helping Dan and in, in the high school through this because we, again, we understand how important that transition is. Uh, um, and not, you know, for our private school students coming into public school, um, and then just for our eighth grade students moving up to the ninth grade, uh, it's, it's important to make sure that they feel comfortable, they feel safe going into this new environment. Uh, so, and we, we have a, we have students, there are like two students on one video Maybe we can get like extra credit if we ask them, see if they have any questions for us. Absolutely. So we still we still have three people in the chat box or in oh, the hands raised. Yeah. So if we can go to Jennifer Grant. I was um, wondering also about the lockdown drills and the fire drills because I know that those are common that we have them like um, just to make sure everything's working and that everybody knows what to do and what's going on but with lockdown drills we all have to sit in the same area so I was wondering how that was going to work and how it would work to get students outside for fire drills. Yeah Jennifer that's a great question so that that question was actually talked about with our director of security recently um, and, and, and we are reaching out to the powers that be to see if those are going, if those expectations are going to be relaxed at all um, in the fall. Um, you know, so as of right now, uh, the plan would be that we would still need to um, administer those drills, um, but we will be asking the question, will those drills be, will, will the expectations be relaxed in the fall, kind of given, you know, given the pan return from the pandemic? Um, that, that is a great question. That is a great question. Good. I'll move on to Lauren, our cherry, but I'd like Kevin, if, uh, Mr. Walston, if you could read Christopher Borges' comment in the chat box and, and reply to that um, verbally, I think that's a good question for everyone. Um, so Lauren, can we hear from you? Yes, um, I'm curious because my daughter is going to 11th grade at DHS and she has a hearing problem. So she reads lips. I have not gotten her an IEP, so I'm a little concerned about um, how she's going to function in a classroom when she can't see the teacher's lips. Hi, hi, Lauren. Um, please, please, please. Um, if you need help, you can email me after this call is over, or you can just, you know, just we can stay on the line. We can exchange information. Um, but I think it's going to be important for your principal and teachers to be aware of. Um, this modification is going to be needed for your child um, because for us it could be a simple adjustment for the teacher. I mean, we, we could just be asking that teacher to wear a mask uh, where their where, where their face is exposed, um, so that so, so so that this is a, a non-issue for your daughter. Um, so you know, it's it's important that your your, your principal is aware, um, so they can make sure the modification is is met. And make sure your teachers are aware. Um, and with that, with that slight adjustment, this should, this should be a non-issue. Um, as a district, we've already talked about ordering special masks for those uh, for those staff members and, and making sure they're available. Uh, in fact, we just had a call this morning uh, talking about the populations that might require this, um, whether it's our ELL community, whether it's our special needs community, or even students, you know, requiring a 504. Um, and even if they're not identified, if it's brought to our attention. We will make the adjustment. Okay, so should I should I try to get her a, um, an IEP for this? We'd never really needed it. She's a, a pretty decent student, but I don't know if I need the writing a piece of paper in writing saying she has this problem, or if we can just work without it. Yeah, that, that's a great question. I, I think it's I think it's best that you um, um, have the conversation with your principal and and your right, and then you know perhaps guidance counselor, et cetera. And they'll make the determination locally because not knowing your specific case. In most cases, you should not need an IEP for this. But again, I you know I don't want to speak out of turn here. Okay. Um, you know there are cases where this can be handled with the 504, and the 504 is just 
you know, making sure we're all on the same page about the support that your, your, your daughter needs. Um, but you might not need a 504, you know, it might just be an adjustment that we can make. Um, or we might need a temporary 504, right? Because right after this, you know, the, these, the, these rules are relaxed, uh, we won't have to worry about the mask again and your daughter can continue to move on and those adjustments might not be necessary. Okay, um, perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome, you're welcome. Good question. So I'm gonna go to Hamaja Tralala, a sixth grader. Um, so since school is indoors, um, how is ventilation going to work in winter? when heaters are running? Yeah, that's a good, great question. So, um, you know, we, we've been encouraged to leave doors open. We've been encouraged to, um, um, to, to leave windows open. Uh, we've been encouraged to socially distance uh, to the best extent possible. Um, and, and, and right now, that with, within our means anyway, that's our best way to try to, to, to help address the ventilation. Um, concerns. Um, so I, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And Mr. Walston, would you like to um, answer Christopher's question or give some feedback about the budget? Sure. Oh yes, the budget one. So so Christopher, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna start responding to your question, but then I'm gonna ask my colleague, who's the true expert here. Um, to, to also give some feedback. Um, so if you don't mind, I'm gonna read the question for the group because I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of people on this call who are wondering, students and parents alike. So regarding the school budget due to COVID, um, we, we know we have you know, decreasing budget. We don't have as much money as we've had in, you know, in typical years. And although this might be true, um, I know there might be a need to buy more supplies and increase sanitation and maybe even more buses. So how are we gonna pay for these things if indeed our budget is decreasing and we have less money? Where's the money coming from to pay for this stuff? And Courtney, I can take the easy one and just hand it off to you, but maybe you should just take the easy one and I'll just get out the way on this one. Thank you, Kevin. I, I don't know if any of them are easy. Um, I just wanna, <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really great to see all of you and to hear your feedback. And I'm, I'm so, so glad that we're getting the opportunity to speak with you. Um, Yes, you're right, Chris. It is a very challenged budget that we have, given that you know the city isn't collecting the revenues that it would normally have collected. And um, that said, there there are additional federal funding um, that's been made available to Danbury, um, and there might be more. We're we're you know scanning the environment for every single possible resource we can we can find. I know we have. Senator Kushner here on the line. So I'd encourage folks to reach out to their legislature and encourage, you know, challenge districts that like Danbury to be treated uniquely like they are. We have an incredibly vibrant, you know, urban population, which also means that we're pretty crowded and so our needs are great. We did get funding um, about $2 million from the CARES Act. It's the elementary and secondary school emergency relief fund to take care of some of the sanitizing things that we'll need. But, you know, as you can, as you know, as a student that's in, in the school, um, Chris, can I ask if you're, if you're here, are you high school? Are you in the middle school? I, I think you chatted possibly because it's hard to. Um, yeah, I, I can't that. see what grade see. level Chris is at. Yeah, so, um, but you know, w w all the challenges that Kevin's talking about working through, we've been, we've been uh, modeling out different scenarios and the cost. So the resources are gonna be part of the decision at the foremost is the safety of, of you, the students, um, the teachers, the faculty, um, and all the administrators. So within the resources we have, we're gonna do everything possible. And so, you know, that means sanitizing the classrooms, that means distancing, you know, getting decals where we need to have decals to remind people where to stand, you know, like Dr. Sal mentioned, um, you know, if mask, masks are mandatory, having available additional masks if students aren't able to, to provide their own. Um, yeah, it's very expensive. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a big challenge. <clears throat> Thank you. And that's Courtney Laborious. She is our director of um, business and oversees our budget and has done a wonderful job on our um, finances this year being new to the district. So thank, thank you, Courtney. Thank you. Okay. If we can go to Ravi. Hi, good afternoon. 
uh, this is Ravi. I have two kids. One is going to West Side, seventh grade, and one younger one at Shelter Rock Elementary, third grade. So I was curious about two things. One is uh, uh, the bus. Uh, are we going to have any capacity restrictions in the bus? And then uh, the second question is, uh, uh, are the kids going to be checked for temperature checks or health checks as uh, a precautionary measure every day? Or how are we dealing with uh, that kind of uh, you know, health checks? So I will start with the bus restrictions. Um, there, there, we, we have been guided to socially distance with, to the greatest extent possible where appropriate. Um, but at the same time, we've also been asked to open up schools at 100% capacity or up to 100% capacity. Um, and so my, my short answer is um, no restrictions. The restrictions would be students wearing masks, um, and 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 that will be the the key restriction uh, when when getting on buses. Um, and and Ravi, I'm not sure if you were on the call earlier, but one of our um, one of our students had raised a question, and you know, and and reminded us quite frankly that we need to um, learn quickly from the from our parents and and, and our students who is going to take advantage of the school buses and who is going to select to drive in to school every day and be picked up from school every day. Um, and that will help with the district's planning effort, planning efforts um, to, to figure out how much we can truly social distance on the buses. Um, but, but without that survey information, we are really not gonna be able to plan for it. Um, I, I, I think, and, and going back to Christopher's question about, hey, we know, we know the budget is tight, and, I, and Courtney just uh, just just talked about where there is additional funding coming in, um, but that but that funding has already been spoken for, and additional buses, quite frankly, has not been part of the budget. Um, and, and and additional buses, additional runs uh, would mean we would probably spend all of our monies down without even getting to all the other necessary things to help with schooling. Um, and so we're we're hoping that serving our community will help mitigate the risk. Um, learning from our families who will be driving to school, who will be taking the bus, um, and then kind of having kind of a, you know, kind of a, an attendance role on the bus, and hopefully we'll be able to reduce the numbers on the bus. Um, we don't necessarily want to encourage families because we don't want to be a burden on the families, but if they are going to drive their kids to school and they'll remain committed to that, that will help us tremendously. Um, and then your your other question about, we at this time, we are not uh, we have not been given the guidance to uh, put, administer temperature checks uh, for our students when they enter the building. Um, however, there will be strong uh, recommendations and guidance for families and staff to self-report. Um, and, and that's something we'll be making available for everyone. Well, thank you, Kevin. I, I totally understand that we are all trying to find uh, you know, solutions for the problems, which we haven't uh, come across any time in our lives. I do really appreciate all that uh, we're going. I mean, you guys are taking care and uh, seeing uh, for to solve. Uh, but I want to uh, suggest two things. One is uh, uh, our kids, like especially the elementary kids, are very too young uh, for them to have masks wore all the time. You know, and. Yes. Uh, it comes with discipline, but at the same time, a lot of monitoring and things like that. The second thing is uh, the profiling of uh, the students. You know, in case, uh, I don't know how to put this, but uh, it will help if uh, someone is sick at home or uh, anything like that. How do we know? Mm. How do we get that kind of, uh, you know, I don't have answers, but at the same time, I don't expect answers. We have to look something around those scenarios. Right. Yeah. I, I and I'm glad you asked that last question in particular, um, because as as part of our self reporting, um, and, and no different from the beginning of this pandemic, it will be important for us um, to to ask families, to ask students, uh, to self report. You know, have you uh, are you experiencing any of these symptoms? Um, are, have you been in contact with someone who's had 
um, had COVID-19. Um, and, and then, you know, having mechanisms in place for folks to self-report um, so that, you know, we can help mitigate the risk in our schools. Um, and, and the important thing, and, and, and honestly, we're, we're going to need everyone's help, help and cooperation on this, you know, whether that's, you know, establishing expectations of students, staff, and families, um, because we're really going to need everyone to finish. We're really going to need everyone um, to, 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 to all be part of the solution, Ravi, in, in cases like this, um, in order to keep our schools and our community safe. Thank you. Thanks. And I appreciate all your hard work. Yeah. Thank you, Ravi. So we have three more people. So I'm going to do Scott and then Griffin and Alberta. So Scott G, if you would like to give your feedback. Um, yeah, it kind of goes off of actually what we were just talking about. Um, but, and that has to do with like with the attendance policy, uh, you know, I think I saw that in the chat a little bit ago. Um, you know, I'm not going to lie. I kind of like the previous years, it's almost like you were encouraged to come to school if you were sick, just with having so few absences. Um, plus, you know, also just the work that you miss in general. Um, so, you know, as much as, you know, you can say, just stay home is something, is there going to be a change with that? Cause otherwise you know, people are going to be very encouraged to come to school or to do something like where you're not going to miss because there's so many ramifications for doing so. Yes. So Scott, so one, number one, Scott, you have a great voice. Um, you might have a future in radio one day. Um, <laughs> and, and, and secondly, um, I, I don't have a great answer for you. Um, I, I can, I, I can share with you, um, that the state guidance, they did recommend strongly that we have an attendance policy in place. Um, but you, you and I also know, and, and most folks on this call, um, a high school attendance policy um, is, 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 is strict. It, it does not have much flex, a lot of flexibility. And, 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 I think, and, and I think what I'm hearing from you, you know, one, the attendance policy encourages our students to be in school every day and, and, and in some cases, it encourages you to be in school even when you're not feeling well. Um, and so I, and, and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you raising this point um, because we will have to develop some type of attendance policy, whether that's, you know, whether that's you know, full-time in school or even in a hybrid model uh, with this partial school or partial distance learning, or even in a distance learning format, we, you know, we need to come up with some type of attendance policy. But if there's any combination where students might be in school, by all means, we want to discourage students from coming in if they're going to compromise their own safety and the safety of others. Um, and it has to be flexibility and being mindful of their own grades, uh, because we, we don't want you to compromise your, your own grades when you know, choosing, choosing the safety of others. Um, so Chris, we, we will definitely make a note of that um, and, and make sure and make sure that's reflected in our attendance policy. That flexibility is reflected in our attendance policy. So yeah. thanks, Scott, for that question. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to Griffin. Yeah, to, to second that, the current policy allows you to miss five core classes. And with the incubation period of COVID being two weeks, people going on vacation and it, showing any symptoms that just instantly gives them a 65. So I appreciate that you don't know what it looks like right now and we may not for a while, but um, I have a question about what, if there's any current discussion about a hybrid distance learning plan, is it, are we thinking about staggering at all and having some people go on some days and some people go on other days? Yeah, great Griffin, that's a great question. So. Um, one, you should know, everyone should know, we, we're actually required to have um, some type of hybrid model available and, and proposed to the state. Um, and so that requirement alone um, suggests that we have to be think, beginning to think through this. Um, so, so that's one. And so, but we're also, and, and given some of the concerns and challenges that we talked about when we first got on this call, um, where one of the students was talking about her experience walking the halls of Danbury High School, and she didn't understand how she could possibly be socially distanced given how crowded our hallways are. And, and frankly, our middle schools, um, ha, you know, our middle school students have a similar experience at their buildings because they're also overcrowded. Um, we, we are, um, 
we'll be looking to see if there are any options to going back to school 100% um, and, 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 and see if any, and, and see if there, if there's any flexibility in a hundred percent return to school. Um, if they're not, then again, we'll have to do the best we can to make sure everyone is safe. Um, but if there are, um, then we will be exploring all of those, all of those options, Griffin, including the ones, you know, some of the ones that you just mentioned. Okay, thank you. No, you're welcome. Thank you. Great, Alberta, I'd like to hear from you. Okay, so we were just talking about my question. So I had the same question as Griffin. So I was, I'm just gonna like explain it in a different way. So like, are you guys considering going back to school like in an eighth period in one day and like having one wave of student coming in the morning and then one wave coming in the afternoon? Or like, are you planning on going like one wave of students in Monday and the other wave on Tuesday? So what is your plan on that? Yeah, yeah, so um. That was Alberta who just talked, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Alberta, I'm not trying to be funny when I when I say this. Um, one, we don't know, and two, we need your help to help inform that decision. Um, and so one of uh, one one of our students earlier had asked a similar question, and I think it's going to be important for us to think through a couple of options. And I think you just um, mentioned a, a few good ones. Um, but propose a couple of different options for our community, um, you know, for, for, for you and your other students and parents to give some feedback on so that we can land on, um, land on some options that, that makes the most sense for our community. Okay, great. And I just wanted to thank all of you teachers and supervisors and everything. You're really doing a great job, like trying to help us learn in our future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alberta. Thank you. Kira McCarthy. Hi, so I was wondering if it was a possibility to like, so maybe like it'd be a little different depending on the amount of students were allowed in the building, but so split like the population of the school in half and have half of the students attend on Monday and Tuesday and then either have Wednesday off or have virtual school on Wednesday and like deep clean the building and then have the second set of students in on Thursday and Friday. Courtney, did you just have a conversation with Kiera? Like, <laughs> um, yeah, you, read, you read our thoughts. <laughs> holy cow. Um, so Kiera, we were just talking about that very plan a couple of hours ago, like in between meetings. Um, so I, I really do think it's gonna be important for us to um, explicitly um, detail provide some options for you, other students, um, you know, moms, dads, families for us to consider uh, because we wanna make sure that we're landing on something again that makes the most sense for our community. Um, Cause we know we have folks who, who have to go to work. We know also know we have, you know, families with, with younger children that have to go to work. Um, but at the same time, we also need to meet the needs of, you know, our older students and, you know, um, Griffin to raise the point, talk about, hey, I'm going into my senior year and extracurricular activities and my portfolio is really important to me. And, you know, we have to be mindful of all of those things uh, when, we, when, when we finally land on a model uh, for, our, for Danbury. Um, and so that's why it's really going to be so important for us to, cert, you know, get this feedback in this survey. Uh, but that, that was a great question. And, and thank you for raising it. Um, okay, and also, so for like when we were normally in school to normally. be able to but, oh my goodness, that was like forever ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, to be able to attend like your team sport or any extracurricular activity, you would have to be in school. So say it was a day, like if we had a hybrid program and if it was a day when you like had distance learning from home, like if you checked in as present, would you still be allowed to go to your sports if like we're allowed to have sports? Absolutely, Kiera. Um, the, the, the challenge for us is, um, and, and this, this may have been your next question, is for our students and families that may need transportation uh, because we don't have an answer to that right now. Um, and so if, if we were, and, and, and these are some of the implications of being in any kind of hybrid model, um, if, if we're gonna continue with you know, full, full extracurricular activities and you know, hypothetically we have students you know, going back to some of the models that Griffin was proposing, we have students in for certain days of the week, you know, that may not necessarily neatly align with 
extracurricular activities. And so the expectation is we would still have the extracurricular activities, but the students, if they're not in school that day or if they left for half a day early, um, you know, getting them back could be a challenge if we're going to provide that transportation. Um, so we, it's, it's probably help we're going to need from the community on this. And again, it, it's, another, it, it's another thing that we have to consider when, when, when landing on a hybrid model of any kind. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kira. Kira, so we have two in the chat box. I'm going to uh, combine because they're very similar. So the first one is if you go on vacation out of state, what does quarantine look like before you can go back to school? And the second part of that from another person is um, what would happen if someone is sick at home and you don't know that you're coming down with it or that you're a super spreader? How would that be dealt with in the school buildings? Yeah, and can we take the, the last one first? Sure. Um, and, and I think it's gonna be important for us um, to have some kind of self-reporting protocol uh, for our community. Um, you know, I was, I was on a call earlier this morning with teachers and, and they had asked, they said, hey, you know, Kevin, we, we, we need to know what the expect, our expectations are, the expectations of our, our families, expectations of our students. Um, and, and, not, and when I say expectations, I mean, what is the expectation of my wear, wearing a mask all day? What's the expectation around, you know, providing masks for a student? And so, you know, no different here, we need to talk about, you know, kind of general expectations uh, for all of us. Um, and, and I'm sorry, the, what was the, the second, the first so, and second question? So the second one was, if you go on vacation out yep. of state, yep. Thank you. it would be quarantine. Yeah. And and so, are we doing contact tracing? Okay. And so it's, it's important for us as part of that self-reporting um, that, that we bring this to, to someone's attention, right? And that's why, again, that's why it's so important for us to have the protocols in place um, to, of self-reporting. Um, and so it's gonna be important that, you know, Courtney and I, you know, she just went to a country that was on high alert and she's just coming back into the country and I just came off of a cruise. Um, I, I need to report that to HR. Um, Courtney needs to report her trip to HR. And so in our schools, um, they will, it will be necessary for our families and our students to report, you know, perhaps to the school nurse or to their, to their administrator, and then we will have kind of further guidance from there. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad you guys are raising these questions because it's going to be necessary for us to make sure it's incorporated in the plan. Um, and frankly, I don't even think there was a space in there for it right now from the guidance from the state, but we're going to have to make sure we have something available. Um, and then second part, and I don't, I don't know, maybe I had, didn't have my second cup of coffee. The first part of that question was. I, I think you hit it. You know, what if there was someone um, at home that had it, um, got it. That, along with that um, self-reporting yeah. and will be, will the district be using contact tracing? Okay. And, and contact tracing is, is something the district will definitely be doing. Um, there's an expectation in our, we will be working with the local health department and our school nurses have all been trained um, on, on, on contact tracing. In fact, um, every nurse, my understanding is, was contact tracing last year um, in, in, in collaboration with the local health department. Um, and so moving forward in the fall, the expectation is we'll be continuing with that effort. Great. All right, so that brings us to the end of questions, which I think have been wonderful. I certainly have a few asterisks more than I had this morning from our other first uh, earlier meetings. And so um, I'm gonna turn it over to Kevin. I don't see that Dr. Sal is still on here, um, but Courtney or Kara Casimiro, who is our uh, Director of Instruction and Curriculum and Kevin, any last comments and we'll close out for today. Sure, thank you, Ann. So, so one, I, I wanna thank everyone for making themselves available uh, for this town hall meeting this afternoon. Uh, we were unsure what kind of presence we would have um, and, and happy to see uh, that we had up to 60 plus people earlier, this at, in, earlier in this call. So it was, it was really great to see so many faces and, and, and so, so many folks involved. Um, as you know, um, we are taking this very seriously. I, I, I hope you. I hope part of your takeaway is the district is taking this seriously. Um, we we know uh, that we will not have a perfect plan, 
and whatever plan that's presented to the public, um, we also know everyone's not going to be happy and it's not going to reach and meet everyone's needs. Um, however, any plan that we put together, um, the spirit of that plan will be to ensure everyone's safety in our schools. Um, and, and, and first and foremost, that's going to be our students, that's going to be our staff, and that's going to be our greater community because we understand and recognize the implications it has on the Danbury community. Um, to, to help inform the plan, however, we need feedback from you. And if there was, if it was, if it was, if it wasn't obvious earlier, it was certainly obvious in this call, at least for me, um, that we need feedback from students and families to help determine what those options are. Um, you know, as mentioned earlier, um, the district is required to have um, landed on a hybrid model in the event of increased cases in the city. Um, and so, and then if there's any flexibility on, a, you know, original back to school model, um, we're also going to need feedback from you. So you will hear from us again soon. Um, by July 24th, we have to have an official plan uh, submitted to the state. Uh, we're hoping to have something publicly presented um, a couple of days prior to that. I believe the superintendent is going to be requesting that we have a board meeting. And so this means in the next two, two and a half weeks, um, we will have probably a couple of more surveys uh, shared with the school community to get their last minute feedback to further um, to, 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 to further update the plan uh, before it's shared, you know, finally with the public. Um, so I, I can't thank you enough uh, for your participation today. I can't thank the students enough. Um, you know, for, for any time we have these meetings, but anytime the students are involved, we get a different level of participation and questions and answers. And so I, I can't thank you enough. And Anne, thank you for putting this together for us this afternoon. Appreciate it. Courtney, any comments? No, I'm just I'm just really looking forward to a, a, a return to school and knowing what capacity that's going to be and seeing everyone again in the fall. So between now and then, I'm sure there'll be more opportunity for us to get feedback from you all. And just know that we're working really, really hard to ensure that you're all safe. And I wanted to thank Kevin for his leadership. And Dr. Salem, everyone on the call today for taking the time to be here with us. So thank you very much. I hope you have yeah. a really wonderful summer from now till when we talk again. Yeah, and and Anne, I just wanna say thank you to, to Julie for joining us. Um, Amy, Rachel, Gladys, Kate, um, I believe I also saw Kathy's name in here. Um, I know you guys have been in and out of meetings all day with us. Maybe we can't thank you enough for your support in this effort. Thank you for your leadership and everyone that's helping make this happen. So thank you, Ann. Thank you all. Have a good rest of the afternoon. Bye. Bye.